morning class and welcome to Primary Pals lesson. I hope you had a wonderful week. Mine was wonderful. We thank God for another day, but before we continue with our lesson, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us the rest of the week and for bringing us to Sunday school. I just pray, Lord, that you come and help all of us, help all the children to understand the lesson help all of us to be good boys and good girls in jesus name we pray amen our lesson is very special it's about food how many of you like food like me yeah i can see some of you like food you know what i'm very hungry let me eat food before i continue i've got a lunch box you know let me see what's it Oh, just this. I thought the whole plant box was full of food. Oh, it's just a small thing. Do you think if I eat this, I'll be full? No. Or do you think this will be enough even for two people? Not at all. How about for 10 people? For 20 people? For 50 people? No way. But you know what? This reminds me of our lesson today. Does anyone remember? There was so little food, but Jesus prayed for that food and it became so much that people ate and ate and ate and they even left something behind. Lots of leftovers. Is someone remembering the story? Okay. Don't worry if you don't remember. Uh, our title for this week is A Special Lunch. And we are going to get our text from John chapter 6, verse 1 to 13. There is a small boy there who did something wonderful, just like our story tells us. This happened, this whole story happened when many people were following Jesus. A multitude of people, a crowd, so many people. Can you see that picture of so many people? So many people and they were now hungry. So Jesus asked his disciples to say, where can we get bread for all these people? So when Jesus asked, he knew anyway what he was going to do. I'm going to read two verses. So, let's get to know what happened in verse 9 and 11. Verse 9. There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? Verse 11. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. Do you get what happened? A small boy agreed to share his lunch. Would you share your lunch? I think Jesus wants us to be able to share. Look what happened in this story. So many people were hungry and this small boy shared. He gave the food to Jesus. Did we take note of what Jesus did? He prayed for the food. Do you now know why it's important to pray? Especially for our food. We don't just start to eat. No matter how hungry we are, we are supposed to pray first for our food and then we eat it. When we do that, we will be appreciating God for giving us the food and also Jesus will bless the food and the food will be satisfying to us. So we should always remember to pray for our food. The key statement for our lesson is, Jesus provides all you need. Say it with me. Jesus provides all you need. Do you remember your memory verse? If you don't remember, it was saying, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches 
in glory by Christ Jesus. Did you remember that? So, this is what we are learning, that Jesus provides. As he provided for the 5,000 people who were hungry, he's able to provide for anything that we need. I don't know what you need. I know what I need. You know what you need. So all we need to do when we need something, we tell Jesus and he will provide all our needs. It could be food. When there's no food, even in the house, it doesn't matter if you're a small boy or you're a small girl, Jesus can hear the prayers of small girls and small boys too. That's why he could use a small boy's lunch to bless everybody. So everybody can be heard. Everybody can be used by God. It is very important then for all of us to know this Jesus and for Jesus to know us. How do we do that? We have to make sure our hearts are clean. And Jesus is very happy with us. We are good boys and good girls. So if we have sin in our hearts, the first thing to do is to make sure we tell Jesus to take away that sin. Once there is no sin in our hearts, whatever we need, we go to Jesus, we tell him, and he supply all our needs. Sometimes he provides us through our parents, you know. The reason why we eat every day, we have uniform, we have pencils and pen, we have shoes, is because Jesus is providing for us through our parents. We don't eat because our parents go to work or they get money at the end of the month or when they, uh, they do something. It is because God is supplying our needs through parents. Sometimes he supplies our needs through relatives, through friends, even through strangers. He has so many ways of providing for us. We just need to trust him and to know that there is nothing that he cannot provide for us. Because he loves us so much. Did you know that? Yes, Jesus loves you so much. He loves me so much. So he doesn't want me to be in trouble. All we need to do is to go to Jesus. We pray to him and he will provide our needs. So if prayer is very important if we have any need. Even Jesus, the son of God, prayed for the bread to be blessed. And God the Father answered. So we too, we can do the same. And sometimes our prayer will just make our, our little food to make us feel full. So prayer is very, very important. So remember the key statement, Jesus provides all you need. Just ask for the need in Jesus' name. And he is going to provide. So, when Jesus prayed for the bread, do you know what happened? He told his disciples to give to all the people. They ate and ate. And you know what happened? A miracle happened. These five loaves and two fishes became plenty. So when they collected leftovers, they collected 12 baskets full of leftovers. Can you imagine this basket? 12 of them. One, two, three, four, up to 12 of them. Wow, that was a great miracle. Only Jesus can do that. That's why we need to pray to him and he will provide all our needs. Thank you so much for listening so well. God bless you. So for this week's activity, I want all of you to find a small piece of paper, write down all your needs, all the things that you want Jesus to give you. For those who cannot write, Ask a grown-up to help you write. You tell them, help me write this to Jesus. And then when you finish writing, take that paper, go and put it in the prayer request box. And 
People are going to help you pray and Jesus will provide all our needs. We just need to believe and trust that he can do that. I'm sure you now know that he can do that. Our next week's lesson is as displayed. We love Jesus too. Thank you so much. Have a blessed week. God bless you. Oh, be careful to hear what you hear. Oh, be careful to hear what you hear. For the Father up above is looking down enough. Oh, be careful to hear what you hear. Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to Answer Class. I'm sure you have a lovely week so far. And I'm so excited to be with you today. I know that you are all ready for Sunday school. So let's get started. The title for today's lesson is Tuned In. With what? With your little heroes. Our memory verse is taken from Proverbs chapter 18, verse 15. The hero of the wise seeketh knowledge. I repeat, the hero of the wise seeketh knowledge. Our Bible text shall be found in the book of Proverbs chapter 17, verse 4, Matthew chapter 7, from verse 24 to 27. Luke chapter 8 from verse 11 to 15. And 2 Timothy chapter 4 from 3 to 4. We are only reading Proverbs chapter 17 verse 4. And Matthew chapter 7 from 24 to 27. Let's open our Bible and read along with our friends, Jotham. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 4. Verse 4. A wicked doer giveth heed to false lips, and a liar giveth ear to a naughty tongue. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. 25. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. 26. And every one that heareth these sayings of man, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. 27. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Thank you, Jotham. That was a fantastic reading. God bless you. Right. How many of you know exactly what I'm holding? Yeah, it is a radio. Have you ever used or listened to a radio before? Yeah, sometimes. It is good, it is nice to listen to a radio because there are all kinds of music, talks, news and shows on the radio. No matter how big or small the radio is, you are in control. What you have to do is to tune in to any station of yours. In this room we have now, there are radio waves traveling through the air. Can you see them? Can you hear them? No! The only way to hear them is to tune you through the ear. That's exactly what I'm going to do now. Wow! Let's see. That's BBC. Let's see, let's see. I'm tuning in. Oh, that is music. Wow. Wow. Let's see another one. That's better. This is news. This is going to tell us what is going to happen. Right. 
There are so many different voices in the radio. Some are good and some are bad. But we have the ability to choose what we want to listen to. So, guys, tuning is so important in this world. There are so many things that want to draw your attention. In our story lesson for today, we learn that what we listen to could greatly influence us deeply. God gave us signs of hearing which help us to understand the world around us. Wherever we go, our ears tune in to something. In a busy shopping center, you could hear the police say, phone calls, loud music, people laughing, <laughs> probably in school. Your ears could hear the sound of bells, students greetings each other, swearing, bumping at one another. You could also hear apologies from others. Something we hear can pollute our mind. There is so much we hear all week at school and around the town that we do not like, that make us sad, isn't it? But you can tune out what you don't want to hear. However, there is a place you can go to hear good things. The psalmist says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. God's house is church. In the church, you listen to spiritual few songs, sermons and testimony, which will lift up your minds and spirits. You could also learn how to hear from God by reading the Bible and pray often. One thing is to tune our ears and listen to God. Another thing is to do what God is asking us to do. God is not pleased when we hear the word but do not put it into action. It's not enough just to read the Bible and know what it says. Mm -mm. We have to do what it tells us to do. God's ways is not an aquarium. In our aquarium, we view the fish from the outside. We do not go in and interact with them. We just watch them swimming along and think about how beautiful and peaceful they are. It is really good to listen and pay attention to what God says and put it into practice. The Bible says, if you listen to God's words, if you don't do it, you are like a man who looks into a mirror and immediately forget how it looks like and dream nothing about it. For example, say you check your teeth in the mirror after eating and find some death in it and immediately you forgot about it and just walk away without dealing with it was the point of looking into a mirror when you forget how you look like you forgot there was some food in your teeth the Bible is telling us what's the point of going to church? What's the point of attending Sunday school? What's the point of reading Bible? What's the point of listening to this lesson this morning? When you know you're not going to do it. We are called to be doers of the word, not hearer only. Jesus said in his parable, that those who hear the ways of God and do them are like a wise man who paints his house on a rock. 
What type of ear are you? Is it the one that built his house on the rock? Or the one that built his house on the sand? May God help us this morning to be doers of the word and build our house on the solid rock, which is Jesus Christ. Remember, guys, my hair will listen to Jesus. That is the end of our lesson. For our activity, which I just been displayed, find out what your heroes will be tuned to. Use the Morse code to the left to disciple the message. Write the ways of the empty lines. For next week, we're going to study lesson 84 titled White Water. Shall we pray? Father Lord, we thank you for today's lesson. We appreciate you for primary pause and answers lesson. Father Lord, I said our thanks. Daddy, come and help us to tune our hair. Make us to be a good listener. Help us to be doers of the word so that we can put everything that we learn today into action. Help us to confess our sins and give us a change of heart. Save souls today, sanctify and baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. At the end of today, O oh Lord, you want to be a blessed people? Answer all our prayer, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. See you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining today's Sunday School. We hope and pray you enjoyed. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you. Bye.